couple times. Definitely. These are lead-up games for the United States, and if Hope Solo doesn't get any attention, then her first real her first real test will be in the World Cup. So she wants some shots. On that whistle, underway. Mexico in the green and white. USA, blue and white. Ocampo, first one on the ball for Mexico. Definitely a player to watch for her side. If Mexico is to do some constructive things today. It may come through her. Ocampo, broken up on this near side. It's Morgan Bryan there. Bryan started the first six games, but Moore's a holding midfield. Now she's playing out wide on the right. On the chase, it's Krieger. Sauerbrunn, back to solo. Kat, what are we expecting at the beginning of this game? But the United States just has to be ready. They were they were a bit lackadaisical against the Republic of Ireland. They didn't have a lot of good team chemistry. Now that they've been together a, another week, can they really start to combine a lot more, especially through the midfield? Yeah, I'd like to see them pressure high. I'd like to see Press and LaRue that are great athletes pressure the defense of Mexico. Morgan Bryan on the right pressure and Rapino on the left pressure and look for some easy early chances. You also have a free kick coming up here. Second minute of play. Holiday pushing it forward. Holiday leads the team in assists with five. Including assists on all three Julie Johnston goals. Sauerbrunn will push it left. A field for Press. Press on the dribble has help. Finds the open player. Lloyd could shoot from distance, brings it in closer. Where she lost possession but then recovers. Lloyd on the turn, looking. Stays in play. Krieger holding there. 11 in the blue of the U.S. Holiday Johnston. Sauerbrunn played every minute so far. The only player in the U.S. that could make that claim since the calendar switched to 2015. She's an anchor for the defense, Sauerbrunn. Long from Johnston. Not a down. Who was after it, and now Ryan goes for it. Ryan out of the University of Virginia on the turn, cutting. Played across by Krieger. Lloyd missed it. Off target. Good start by the USA. I like the work that Morgan Bryan's doing on the right flank. She's pushing hard. She's winning some balls. You can see that she has flair when she does have it. And you want to give Carly Lloyd those opportunities, Kat. Oh, absolutely. I love her 1v1 skills. She's not afraid to take anybody on. And that's a good attacking ability. And Carly Lloyd right here, she needs to get that on frame. This is Brian looking like she was going to be a starter earlier this season. Still might be come the World Cup, but maybe not in the position we thought. Well, that might happen if Press and LaRue look really good up top. Press stays there. Brian could end up on the right flank, especially the way she started this game. This is a huge game for Sydney LaRue. This is her first start of 2015. She hasn't had a lot of minutes, but if she can get a couple of goals in this game, she could really make a statement for being a starter game one of the World Cup. Well, LaRue hasn't scored lately, but she's not alone in that category. Those are not good numbers for a U.S. team that normally does much better. Now, LaRue, the finish. LaRue's only played 123 minutes, so it's a little bit deceiving there, but you're right, JP. She's after this ball. Hungry for it. Try to chase it down. Corner kick. Press and LaRue, the two front runners, have one goal between them in 2015, so you know they've got a lot of incentive. And I like that Kristen Press is getting pushed for it. She enjoys playing in that forward position, so it's going to be interesting to see Sydney LaRue and Kristen Press and how well they can combine today. Rapino, first corner. Watch, US. watch Johnston. Three goals off of set pieces for Johnston. It comes in, nodded away by Robles. Sent back into the box, and Santiago makes the easy play. Speaking about forwards, Kristen Press playing up top today. For more on that, Jenny Taft. 
Well, Kristen is so happy to be playing at Stub Up Center. She grew up only 35 minutes away from here. Surprisingly, she's never played a game in her hometown as a member of the U.S. national team. She also told me the U.S. played here for their victory tour after the 2012 Olympics. She wasn't on that roster. She also told me she's expecting 70 friends and family here to support her today. Thanks, Jenny. Kat, she told us yesterday whether she plays out wide or up top, she's always thinking that forward mentality. Yeah, she said it, it's, a, it's a different mentality to play on that outside, but she's so comfortable with the forward that she wants to keep pressing high, and now she gets that opportunity. Perez played it forward. She was looking for Calderon. Perez, definitely a player to watch, number 17 in the green and white of Mexico. Holiday's back for the ball. Lloyd distributes. Halfway line for Lloyd. Missed on an earlier chance. Normally much more lethal from that close. Santiago will clear. Cecilia back as the number one goalkeeper for Mexico after a bit of a slump. Didn't really play after the first game in qualifying and then regained her starting position. Santiago, she is very good with her feet. She's still so young. Even though she has one World Cup under her belt, she is still only 21 years of age. So if she can really start to develop true goalkeeping skills and holding on to the ball a lot better, she could be a star one day for this Mexican national team and really develop into a star for the world at goalkeeping position. She is a young talent, and, you know, goalkeepers mature a lot older than outfield players. So she's got a great future in front of her. Holiday, halfway line, broken up. Corral was after it. Instead, it's Lloyd. Press, almost pulled down. Deflected ball goes away. No foul given there. On the sideline, picked back up. Brian, Rapino, end line, cuts it back. And the slip in front of goal it was costly there for Sidney LaRue. And Mexico will break down that right sideline. Calderon. Help was coming. Bianca Sierra. But now it's Press turning it back. Head up. Press tries to go outside. And the offside flag goes up in Rubino. One of their goals is to get out wide today against Mexico. We'll see if they can get that done with some efficiency. In these first seven minutes, it, it is already an improvement from the last game against the Republic of Ireland. Their speed of play, their decision-making, it's just a lot quicker, and they're not afraid to turn and take risks. And it does look like right here, Megan Rapino is definitely offside, but I like that she's trying to push forward. But what I like, Kat, is the USA is playing a high-pressure defense. And this is different than the way they've been playing a lot of matches. And if you want easier goals, dispossess the other team close to their own goal and get in before they can get organized. And I like the way the U.S. is approaching it. Brian from Krieger pulling it back. Lloyd brings it down, trying to leave LaRue. Cut off by Murillo. Pushed forward. Intercepted before it got to Calderon. She picked the wrong forward. Kristen Press was, was making a run, and she decided to go for Sydney LaRue. But the good thing is she had two options. I agree with her. She picked the wrong one, but she had both players looking to get in behind the defense. Holiday try to push it out wide. And the U.S. gives up possession. Next month, the FIFA Women's World Cup begins as the U.S. Women's National Team takes on the best teams in the world in search of their third World Cup title. And the only place you can see the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup is on Fox and Fox Sports 1, beginning June the 6th. This ball going out of play for a throw-in for Allie Krieger. Second game back after suffering a concussion in the first game of her NWSL season. LaRue nods it down. Brian probably's had more touches in this game so far than anyone else in the squad. Broken up back there, but picked up and then lost by Johnston. There's a sharpness in the U.S. play, but also Mexico has absorbed their early pressure pretty well, and that's something they haven't always been able to do against the USA. I absolutely agree. I was just thinking how impressive it was that they're back for, even though they've been getting turned a lot, there's been a lot of crosses in the box, there really hasn't been that chance on frame the United States normally gets against Mexico. Over the top towards LaRue, goalkeeper's out. 
Santiago did pretty well with that. Now has to retreat toward goal. Now is back. As Krieger gets to it. Good goalkeeping there by Santiago because LaRue was in. The flag stayed down. Rapino. Press. Cutting ball through Rapino. Flag stays down. Big save, Santiago. The flag stayed down. It's a corner for the U.S., but it could have been their first goal. This is just a good piece of soccer right here. Rapino brings it inside. Press does a great job showing a little one-two. Rapino's in on goal. Rapino hasn't scored in 2015. She needs to make that opportunity. Look at this little one-two here. And the midfielder from Mexico not even following her runner, but Santiago comes up big time for Mexico. The USA's corner towards the back post area, headed across by Lloyd. And then cleared out by Mexico. Krieger recovered it. Sauerbrunn. Sent forward. Bryan makes the run. Cuts it back. And it's going to be cleared away. You know what's good about the two front runners, Press and LaRue, is they're incredibly mobile. They're running and making runs. They don't just wait. And that opens up space for other players. And you saw the run LaRue made. Now Rapino is able to come inside. Their mobility makes the U.S. attack more varied. Cut back by Press to Krieger. Want to go along with that. Press, who is normally in that withdrawn midfielder role, she's coming back a little bit more, which has given Morgan Bryan a little bit more space in, fr in, in front of the defenders, which is allowing her to get more of the ball, which is an encouraging prospect for the United States. Yeah, Press is a good number 10 player. She's just not a number nine. She's a good number 10 player. She can make that final pass, as we saw with the ball to Rapino. Holiday back to Hope Solo. See, Cat? Hope got a touch. <laughs> Hasn't conceded since her first game back at the Algarve Cup against Norway. Krieger. That's cut off. Played forward by Murillo. That's what Mexico does not want to do, give the ball back that easily, that quickly to the U.S. But Mexico has to stay in their game plan. That was one thing that Leo Cuellar said. They leave the game plan. They abandon their game plan. And all of a sudden, they're all in six and sevens against the USA. They need to stay in their game plan. They know they're not going to get a lot of the ball. But stay compact. Stay organized. Bianca Sierra, the outside back, number 15 for Mexico, said this is the most disciplined their back four has ever been. And you're seeing that. They're picking and choosing when they're going forward. And right now, they haven't chosen once to go forward because they have to make sure that they stay put with the United States attack. Holiday holds there for the U.S. Held up there. Johnston going long distance. Tengenberg after it. It's going to be too far. It's going to be a goal kick for Santiago. Clean Ruby, that run from her outside left back position. It was a good look, just didn't connect, but I like the long diagonal change of point. And the U.S. is attacking, attacking down the middle and on both flanks. And that's, that's a positive. Now they need to look a little bit over the top. They have the speed to beat these Mexican defenders. They need to utilize that a little bit. Circle, U.S. will come away with the ball. Lloyd breaking. I see Mendes missed, so did Maria. U.S. have Mexico on their heels. Brian goes back post, headed across, cleared away. Loose to the box for LaRue. That's blocked. Rapino saves Santiago. That's a brilliant save. Rapino again, and Santiago, that's a goalkeeping clinic. Wow. Here's the ball. It gets to the outside to Brian. And then a lot happens here. It gets in front. Good head ball. Saved off the line. Saved off her face. 
And then she still has the presence to come up with the ball. Great stuff from Santiago, but a really good attack by the USA. Garcia Mendez with that clearance off the line that prevented the USA from scoring. Here's Lloyd on the ball, wearing the armband today. Wambach on the bench and Rampone as well. You may see Christy Rampone today. That's one of the things Jill Ellis shared with us yesterday. She'd like to give Christy Rampone some minutes. She's not played for the USA except in the closed door the other day. Krieger putting pressure on the ball. Corral, nowhere to go, but that was lost out. I thought it was off Johnston, but it's not. It's the USA's throw in. The Cats, there's only one thing they got to do. They got to put it in the back of the net. My God, they had opportunities. Ball's cleared off the line. Now they've got to put it in the back of the net. Jill Ellis will take a sigh of relief when that happens. Well, Leo Cuellar was right with Santiago being in form. She has saved them already twice. And really three times. And the United States is just knocking at the door. But the Mexico defense is just putting their bodies in front of the ball, not making it easy for the United States attack. Cat satisfied with the speed of play and movement off the ball. Those were issues that Jill Ellis also wanted to address. Absolutely. It has been so quick. It, and the main thing that it is, it's the decision making. No one's hesitating on the ball. They're not taking that extra touch. They know exactly where they want it to go. Campo, Corral. Try to play it across, so little possession for Mexico. An awful lot of defending in the early going. 17th minute, zeros on the board. Throw in for the United States from between the benches. I define speed of play by speed of ball movement and speed of player movement. Speed of player movement to support the ball, speed of player movement to get an advance of the ball, like to get in. And you're seeing that from the USA in these first minutes of this match. Sauerbrunn. For the U.S. has Johnston there. Julie Johnston has scored in three consecutive games. Tied with Wambach as the top scorer of this club in 2015. And it's interesting with the speed of play. They're playing on grass in these lead-up games, which is not something they wanted to do. They wanted to be on turf since that's what they're going to face in the World Cup. But they're making this field seem like turf with how quickly they're playing the ball right now. Carly Lloyd looking to spring Krieger. Long run back. Bianca Sierra knocked it out of play, throw in USA. Kat, the pace of this game is different. And the reason why the pace is a higher pace is because the USA is pressuring. And you want to raise the pace of the game, you can move the ball quicker, but when you raise the level intensity of your defense, it also raises the pace of the game. And you have to think that the reason for the pressure is because you have LaRue and Press up, up top. They have that speed, their tenacity up front. While in the Republic of Ireland game, you had an Abby Wambach who tends to hold back a little bit more defensively. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and see, I don't think there's, when the, when the pace of the game goes up, there's not that many teams that can play at the pace that the USA can play at. And you're seeing right now, that Mexico is surviving this pace of play. They're not able to play at it. Lloyd over to Sauerbrunn. Becky Sauerbrunn tried to play it wide towards Klingenberg. It's going to go out of play for a Mexico throw-in. Kenti Robles will take it on the far sideline. Jill Ellis has to be excited about what she's seeing. And the last piece of the puzzle is once again, you can't get the chances they're getting and come away empty. As good as Santiago has been, that goal is eight yards by eight feet high, and it's you got to find the open. Played up for Corral. Led them during World Cup qualifying with four goals. Moved ahead now to Holiday, right side Krieger. Good work here from Ocampo, tracking her down. Brian. Everybody back from Mexico. They've been organized since the get-go. Rapino holding there. Looking for LaRue. It goes instead towards press. LaRue picks it up. Turns, fires high. Enough time to get a shot off, but it goes 
off frame a little bit too much, and you're right. They have to get those balls on frame and try and get second chances if they can. It's just not there quite yet for the U.S. She's had some injuries. That's why she hasn't had so many minutes this year, just 123. But when you look at her strike rate, I know it's no goals in 13 games, but one goal for every 82 minutes, that's better than even Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan in their strike ratio. Well, she's a talent, and believe me, she wants to play up in Canada. So she was born, she now is a USA player, obviously. And she wants to play up there and, and have a great tournament. She plays with a lot of incentive. Rio sends it forward. Long run back, but it's well covered. Sauerbrunn to the feet of Hope Solo. She shanked that one away. It goes up into the seats. Throw in for Mexico. I think that was a good play by Hope. You know, be decisive, just get it out of play. If the U.S. is organized, I don't see Mexico breaking them down, even though Mexico does have some dangerous players in Corral and Perez and Ocampo. These players know how to finish chances if they get them. Ocampo cutting on Krieger. That shot. Solo makes the stop. Not credited with the save last week against the Republic of Ireland. She's in the discussion still as the best goalkeeper in the world. Nadine Onger up there as well for Germany. You see some great goalkeepers during our World Cup coverage on Fox. And I don't think there's a question when it comes to Hope Solo being the best in the world. I think without a doubt she's the best in the world and she's going to have to be for the United States to win. Yep. Onger, the German goalkeeper, has already said she's going to be retiring once that World Cup campaign and this NWSL season is over. Well, Ari Heinz, our colleague from Germany that will be in, in the studio this summer, will disagree with you. But I agree with you, Kat. Hope Solo, when she's on her game, she's focused right now. When she's on her game, she's the best. Well, recently in the NWSL, Unger plays for the Portland Thorns, and she gets exposed a lot because she comes off her line just a little bit too much. And that's her biggest weakness. And you just don't see Hope Solo getting exposed really ever, and that's what is the difference between Solo and Anger. Yeah, I think Anger has watched uh, Manuel Neuer too much about coming off the line. But they're both great goalkeepers. Krieger traps it. Scoreless here. Now entering the 23rd minute. Klingenberg's open. She did well to bring that ball down. That was difficult. End line press looking for Rapino. It goes instead over the bar. If we Flick see this again, I don't like Rapino's run. Rapino should have held her run. And watch, this is a great touch by Klingenberg. Keep it in play. Now, Rapino's at the top of the 18. She's got space here. She should hold her run. She gets too close to that defender. The ball goes behind her. And those are the little things that they need to connect in the penalty area. Pino puts it up there. Lloyd missed. Brian looks for it. Lloyd doesn't get through. Cleared away by a sea of green there. Out wide to Krieger. Cutting inside. Try to find Lloyd. That's a trickery there from Carly Lloyd, but it's going to be cleared away. Out for USA throw in. run from Rapino. I don't mind the run because you want someone near post. There just needed to be another midfielder making a run in behind her. You're right. If she had been patient, she probably would have been at a better angle at finishing it. But where are the other midfielders or another forward running in and giving press that option? Brian with it. I'll respond to that in a minute, but I see something good happening here from the USA. Rapino, Lloyd. Try to go outside Rapino. Cut up by Robles. Cleared out of play. And the reason why I think she has to hold her run is when that ball goes to the end line, every defender runs back towards their, the, the front of the goal to protect the front of the goal. So if you're running in that same direction at the same speed, you're just basically closing yourself down. If you hold your run, now you may find some space. Rapino in on a bounce, but Santiago's right there. And so far, Santiago has been the story in the early going for Mexico. 
Yes, she's been good I here. Know, I love her off her line here. You're, you know, giving that confidence to the Mexican back line and making big time saves and the Mexican players are all over, but Santiago is right where she's supposed to be. She got hit in the face. She went down, the, the shot actually knocked her off her feet, but she was up quickly to make the next save. That's big time goalkeeping at any level. At age 16, she became the youngest women's goalkeeper to ever play at a World Cup. So you're looking at a 20-year-old veteran of the game. I actually played with her with the Boston Breakers, and she was young and, and you know, a bit immature then, but I, just tonight I'm seeing so much difference from her with her quickness and her confidence back there. And that's for, I'm talking about a 21-year-old with that kind of confidence. And if you're Mexico, you have to be encouraged by that. Having someone lead you and scream at you right, like she's doing right now, that could be the difference for them to beat that Columbia team that they so desperately need to beat in their group play. You're absolutely right. You, you just can't go very far in the World Cup without a competent goalkeeper. In a team like Brazil, I'm not sure they have the goalkeeper that can get him to the late stages, but I'm, what I'm seeing from Santiago, she can get Mexico into the second round, into the knockout round. Schedule-wise, they start off against Colombia. That's a huge game for them. Then they take on England, they close out versus France. When we spoke yesterday to Leo Claire, he knows how big of a game it is. They've had some good luck, though, Tony, in a couple of games earlier against Colombia. They have a tie and a win against Colombia, played earlier, but that Colombia game, because three teams go through from four out of the six groups, if they can get three points from Colombia and not get hammered by either England or France, let me tell you something, they can steal something from England. I don't think so from France. Four points gets them through, three points with two you know, losses 1-0, maybe even 2-0, and I think they get through, and that would be huge for Mexico. Soto grabs a hold of it. 27th minute. You know it opens, so she'll keep it. Dominating possession stat for the United States. They had a huge edge last week in all of the stats, but the one stat that they'd like to improve on, that zero on the board. Forwards basically auditioning for a chance to start at the World Cup. Alex Morgan still out with that injury. A field, a flag stays down. LaRue's in. Keeper's out. LaRue's shot. And the U.S. gets one. Sidney LaRue. Kat, she didn't make it easy, but this is a great one. Watch her take off. That's a great run to get in. Now she goes around the keeper. Look at the angle that she has to score in. Unbelievable angle. I love that she stayed on side two. Perfectly timed run. But this angle to score on this is so difficult. Morgan Bryan's making the run to make sure it goes in. But Sydney LaRue with a fantastic effort to get that ball in the back of the net. Her first goal in some 14 games. And that'll help her confidence for sure. Well, that helps the USA because they can't play as well as they have been without getting a reward. And now they have a reward. That'll settle them. That'll create a collective USA confidence. Lloyd trying to pick it up. Perez took her down. Perez leaves it off. Ooh, big collision there on the far sideline. A couple of players down. And play will be stopped. This could be a card for Lloyd. She got in late. Well, and Carly Lloyd was frustrated with the fact she didn't get a foul called on the last play. And she goes in just a little bit too fast and reckless. And in my opinion, that's a definite yellow card. And in the World Cup, that will be a yellow card. Robles was the player that feels the effects of that. <laughs> it's going to 
New Mexico's ball and play continues. You see the headband that Carly Lloyd is wearing. We're told it's just to, to be proactive. Everyone concerned about concussions, and that's all that that is. Abby Krieger also wearing one, but she did have concussion issues. Ball played long into the box, solo off her line. Oh, she's upended. And the Mexican player was the one that took the worst of that. It is Ariana Calderon. It's probably fortunate that, that Hope's not hurt in a collision like that. Could have been worse. Could have been. And, and remember earlier in the year, Hope Soul came for a ball like that. Here it is. Probably should be boxed when she knows she's going to have that much contact. But you can see that she's sharper than she was early in the year, and she holds on to that. She lands hard, but she basically said, this is my territory. I'm going to claim anything in here. Forwards beware. Back for Julie Johnston. Had solo if she wanted to go back. LaRue. Brian. Press chases it down. On the right sideline, it's Kristen Press trying to go inside, outside. Now finds Krieger. A cross was denied. And cleared away by Mexico towards Corral. She'll drop it back. Calderon. And okay. his intended for Ocampo goes out. Cat, I didn't like that run by Krieger. You've got to take on artists 1v1, and Krieger runs into the space that she wants to use to take on and brings a defender in there. Let Press have her chance to beat a player because then the defense is in real trouble. Rapino against Robles. Help was coming. Rapino dancing at the ball. Pulls it back. Double teamed. Up the middle for Lloyd. Tackle the way. Lloyd tries to recover and does. LaRue. Wide. Brian's open. The cross. Back post area. Santiago is chasing it off the crossbar. It comes loose, and it's going to be cleared away by Rangel. Ocampo. Corral for Mexico. Waiting for the run. Now finds Ocampo down that left wing. Monica Ocampo with a couple of cuts goes wide on Brian. Played it in front. Cleared away. Gathered back in and fired in high and wide by Rangel. Goal kick for Solo. Well, this is excellent decision making from Cindy LaRouche. She normally would take that shot, but she plays it out to Morgan Bryan and a perfectly placed ball off the crossbar. And Mexico is able to clear it out right on time. But the United States just keeps getting so close. Yeah, I think Carly Lloyd has to do a little bit better on that. It was a great serve. She was able, able to take a step in towards it, lift, and, you know, should have put it on frame, not off the bar. Krieger chased back by Ocampo to the feet of Solo. Solo will clear right on the money there to Lloyd. Kat, you were right on. I think a younger Sydney LaRue would have tried to shoot that. Instead, she picked out Bryant and basically almost led to a goal. Well, I think a Sydney LaRue from last year would have taken that shot. She has matured a lot, and I think. Honestly, sometimes when you get injured, you have an opportunity to watch a little bit more and to learn from the players on the field. And so far, it looks like that benefited her a lot with her decision making. The Johnston pass was picked off, but followed up by Lloyd. Good movement off the ball, and then Lloyd picks it back up. Tried to play that too early to the feet of Press. The little one-two with Lloyd in the room. Press was trying to make a run that I didn't think was on because the defense had read it. Maybe if she cut in front of that defender. But still, that's good. That's good soccer that the U.S. is playing right now. Well, Jill Ellis talked about how she really wanted to find the space in front of the back four of Mexico. And both LaRue and Press are doing a nice job of just checking into the space and combining with those midfield players. And that's where that one-two came from. Now that just needs to be the final ball to finish what they started. Tough ball, but Julie Johnston was able to clear it out. Brought back down by Perez. Sienna for Mexico. Trying to return it. 
Veronica Perez chasing it down. And ended up with a corner kick. Perez at one time played for the USA under 23 team. Born in California to Mexican parents. She had a choice of two countries to play for. Perez is ready out of the University of Washington. Her sister also on this team played it across. Knocked away. It's loose. Quick shot right hell. Just missed the post. It's a goal kick for Hope Solo. Close call though. It was close. And to be honest with you, I thought Hope should have come for this ball. It had a lot of loft on it. It wasn't a driven ball, and I think it's well within her range. Dangerous shot, though. Ball kind of gets mixed up in there, but it looks like Klingenberg had the post covered. And that's what you want from your post players to stay at home until Hope Solo releases them. Thirty-sixth minute, just a one-nothing lead for the USA. They've had their chances, quite a few in this opening half of play. Lloyd towards Klingenberg. Lauren Holiday needs to start to insert herself a little bit more. It's been a lot about Carly Lloyd combining with the Ford. You've seen Rapino and Morgan Bryan as well doing a nice job of getting into the attack. We haven't seen from Lauren Holiday yet. She struggled a bit a bit against the Republic of Ireland. She is a critical factor to the United States winning the World Cup. She needs more touches on the ball. Johnston, LaRue, off the chest of LaRue. She'll try to win it back. Tried too hard there, fouled Perez. LaRue has the only goal of the game, 28th minute. First goal of this year and first in 14 games. And her first start of the year. Yeah. Perez. Ocampo. Slots it through. Nice idea. Worked on no doubt on the training field. Going for a throw in. Well, she was looking for an obstruction call there. After she put it through Krieger's legs, but the referee was wise not to uh, make it a call. A Floyd. It's blocked, gathered in. Lost there by Ron Hell. Picked up by Kristen Press. Tried to go wide. Oh, had Rapino open. Holiday picks it up. And that's picked off as well. Perez knocking it to the right. Mexico will settle now. We'll try the long ball too far for Corral. It'll bounce right back to Hope Solo. Well, it's almost like the goal that they allowed for Mexico has settled them down a bit. They are attacking a lot more. They are still disciplined, staying with their game plan in the back, back four, but they're pressing more. They're getting higher, and they're taking more risk, which is causing a bit of problems for the United States. And the USA may have taken their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. And they can't do that. It, they've been playing very well in the last few minutes. Mexico's had a little bit of the initiative here. Rapino for Lloyd. Back to make it Rapino now in the center circle. Looking forward to press. Knocked away. Campo. Deflected last touch by the U.S. Throw in for Mexico. The 39th minute. Sierra plays for the Boston Breakers, so the NWSL will take this throw in. Flip four in the foul there. Corral was taken down. Yeah, silly foul by Krieger. Mexico, I don't think, has the players that can beat the USA in the air. But against another opponent, that this could be very dangerous. Sierra sending it up there. Solo's out to grab it. It's not it in. The shutout streak is over. Mexico has tied the game. Well, they've always called their own. They got a touch to that. 1-1. One, one. Now it's game on. 
It sure is, and, and Kat said it. U.S. took their foot off the gas pedal. Mexico got relaxed after they gave up the goal. And that ball, hope shouldn't have come from. It was too low. She got herself stranded. She came, but she didn't claim. And back of the net, not a good goal for the U.S. to give up. Well, it was a perfectly placed ball from Bianca Sierra. And Calderon just got in front of Becky Sauerbrunn. And she wanted it more than both Solo and Sauerbrunn. And just a little flick when the ball is played that well. All you need is just a little ricochet. And Calderon did a nice job putting it in the back of the net. It's her first international goal, but I go back, Tony, something happened to her as well, maybe in the collision afterwards, but I go back to that foul. You said it was a foul that should not have been conceded there. You do that at a World Cup, you're going to get punished, but even here at a friendly, you got punished. And I was wrong because I said that Mexico probably didn't have a player to finish it, but Calderon proved me wrong. But, you know, Hope came for the ball. She's calling for the ball when she comes, so her defenders either protect the goal or kind of try to keep players off them, but they don't continue to compete for the ball, and I think that was the opening that Calderon needed. Holiday with it. So now it's 1-1, and that changes things for sure, and you think back to all those USA missed opportunities and some of the brilliance of Santiago and some help as well from Garcia Mendez. Calderon is off the field, by the way being treated on the sideline. So Mexico playing with 10. Corral on the move. Ocampo now in the middle. And this right side, it's pushed forward. Romero started it, now it goes back toward the middle. Ocampo trying to chase it down. Mexico is gonna make a change, so maybe the injury is more serious than we had thought on Calderon. Otherwise, why take her out? So Mexico will make their first substitution. Of course, this is one of the fears of all coaches. Close to World Cup time, you're 20 days out. You want your players to play hard, but you don't want anybody to get injured. Well, she must have known it was more serious, and thus the substitution now. As Corral plays it in and Solo grabs that. We've seen recently Germany's had three players, two ruled out of the World Cup because of injury. One is a question mark now. Lauder just was injured recently. And then another player missing because of pregnancy. So the Germans could be out four key players come this next World Cup. Well, Nadine Kessler, who is out, was the FIFA player of the year. So that is a key player, tremendous midfielder. And Alushi is a really she's a different type of player than Germany normally has. She takes on in the flank, very smart, very quick. She's pregnant, so she's out of the World Cup. They didn't plan that very well, Kat. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of surprised about that one. But for Mexico, you also have some injuries with Samarzic breaking her foot this week. And Stephanie Mayor, one of their more exciting players when 1v1 ability attack, ability in the attack. She hurt her ankle. They think she'll be fine. Leroux with another good run. Step behind the defense and then lost it for a second. Recovers, pushing it back. Holiday thinks about it. Fires right at Santiago. Rebound, Rapido. Rebound, Brian. That's stopped as well. And Mexico will clear it away. Klingenberg's on it. Sent forward. Nodded away. Here's Krieger. Well, if this was Mexico of even last year, USA would be up probably by four goals, but they've shown some composure back there, not just Santiago, but some of the defenders and the clearances. Normally in a scramble like that, the U.S. would score against Mexico. This is a completely different Mexico team. I, I, normally, you're right, they would have bogged down and, and given up more chances, but they're really sacrificing themselves out there. And I'll be honest, when I was a player against Mexico, you kind of thought it didn't matter how you played, you were still going to beat them. Right now, the United States isn't playing badly. They're actually playing extremely well, but Mexico is coming after the United States, and they're showing a lot of confidence. As JP said, game on. Yep. You'll see Mexico at the World Cup starting in June. They're in a tough group, as we mentioned. Colombia, England, and France. France among the favorites to win the World Cup. Well, either Brian or Rapino needed to put one of those rebounds away.
Uh -huh. Here's LaRue. She's running onto that ball, and I, I, she spins out. And this is, you know, setting up Holiday, who drives the ball. You can see the ball moving. Rapino or Bryant needs to put that away. I think Rapino's chance was more difficult because she was so close to the keeper. Well, both of them shot it right at Santiago and Garcia Mendez. If they had just placed it just a little bit to the right or the left, that would have been a goal. So just a little bit more composure from the United States in front of the goal right now. They're just getting a little bit too excited. Lloyd up the middle is LaRue. Santiago's out. Empty net for Sidney LaRue. Tough angle though now. Players going for it off Rapino. Incredible. That is incredible. Guys, are they pressing? Is that what's happening here? No, it's just a bit of execution. LaRue did everything right, except the ball she gave Rapino was a little bit more difficult than it needed to be. But didn't she have the chance to put it away on her own? Her last touch is what got away from her. Here she beat Santiago. Santiago coming up on this touch right here. It's what got away from her. And then she puts a ball back, not on the ground. And it made it difficult for Rapino to handle. But again, Rapino is sprinting, and I think she just needs, there's no one around her, just slow it down. It wasn't a good ball, but it, she kind of overran it. She did that earlier, too. Holiday's corner. Setting it across the way. And headed wide. Santiago, but it was last touched by a Mexican defender. So it's a corner kick for Rapino. We're in stoppage time. A 1-1 game. USA yeah. Mexico we call that last chance by the US taking a real chance and turning it into a half chance Rapino sending it in it's cleared away headed away by Mexico picked up by Klingenberg looking for Rapino in line the ball skipped away and out of play the, the goal kick coming up as the first half, we won't even see the goal kick. First half has come to a close. Sidney LaRue with a goal for the United States. Santiago has been the story, though, for Mexico in goal. Calderon had a goal in the 40th minute that tied it at one apiece. Studio will follow us after this break, but it's been all USA in terms of the offense, but not a lot to show for. Just one goal from Sidney LaRue. 1-1 at the half from Carson, California. In the 28th minute, Calderon got the equalizer in the 40th and then was subbed out because of an injury. But we're expecting changes now. We'll see Abby Wambach coming in. And also, Christy Rampone will play for the first time for the USA in this calendar year of 2015. You don't count that closed door scrimmage on Wednesday. None of those stats are counted. So we'll see how that changes things. I'm a little surprised Press came out, but the second half of the first half, she wasn't as active as she was when she started. But obviously with Abby Wambach, it changes the attack a bit. Columbia's also going to be coming in. Jill Ellis talked a lot about getting Christy Rampone some minutes, and this is an opportunity for Christy Rampone to show us how well she's doing after her injury. You can make up to six subs in this game. USA has just made three of them. And on that whistle, second half is underway. U.S. still has to be concerned about a lack of finishing. Just the one goal with all those chances that they had in the opening half of play. Now they've got their best ever finisher in Abby Wambach out on the field. Rapino. The flick towards LaRue. Looking, shooting. Not much on that. Stumble there, and then Wambach comes in after it. USA. Holiday's down as well. Well, the U.S. needed to keep the pressure on for the second half, and they sure, certainly have done this. This is right off the kickoff. Bryant, Holiday, Bryant. Rapino gets on it. Finds LaRue. 
gets a chance here, goes down hard. But Kolumny is ready. She loves to get into the penalty area, Kat, and she finishes her first touch of the second half. Well, she's a typical attacking player, so it's no surprise that Lori Kolumny was able to finish that. And this is a good sign for the United States to see Lauren Holiday getting up, running off the field on her own. Holiday appears to be okay for Columbia, who just celebrated her 100th cap a week ago in the game against the Republic of Ireland. Gets her second goal of this calendar year over the past few games. Scored as well in St. Louis against New Zealand. Now, how does Mexico respond after giving up a goal really off the kickoff? Time of the goal, 46th minute for Columbia. Held up on his left sideline, out of play for a throw in. Jenny Taft had a chance to talk with USA head coach Jill Ellis at halftime. Jenny, what did you find out? Well, Jill said she couldn't be upset with all the chances that the U.S. had in that first half. She said will come and boy was she right about that Jill also mentioned to me she was extremely happy to see Sydney playing so well in that first half getting that goal and she also said defensively they need to do a better job defending the space behind the outside backs that's where Mexico is looking to get their opportunities maybe one of the reasons for Rampone coming in although yesterday Kat that was one of the things that Jill Ellis spoke about, trying to get some minutes for Christy Rampone. So probably regardless of the score, she was going to come in at some point. Yeah, but when she did talk about getting Christy Rampone the minutes, she really mentioned her speed and how important Rampone's speed is. And that's where it's going to be critical. The, that ball in behind those outside backs, Christy Rampone covers it better than most anybody in the world. Rapino over this ball. Rampone is going to be 40 during the World Cup. Amazing story. Corral looking for it. Here's Mexico back on the ball. It was interesting talking to Rampone about her this World Cup, and she's like, I still feel like I have the speed. The stats are still showing I have it, so why not keep playing? Age is just a number, right? Yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. And when Jill Ellis talked about that space behind the defense. She specifically mentioned Sweden and how they like to attack that space. And she said, we may need Rampone for that match. Rampone is back wearing the captain's armband. On that right sideline it goes now to the middle for Holiday. It's behind Lloyd. Mexico will pick it up. Try to get some numbers forward. Campo on the left. Back by Cuellar and then taken over by Sidney LaRue. Starting back, three on the chase for Mexico. LaRue had the game's first goal, drops it back. Bryant trying to play it in. Wambach after it. Blocked there. Garcia Mendez and cleared out for USA throw in. Coach makes subs, especially at halftime. The one thing they don't want is a drop in intensity and a drop in quality. And Joe certainly didn't get that when the second half started. Throwing right by the corner flag, U.S. will lose it out on holiday. You're right to that point that they didn't lose it when they scored the goal, but you can already get a sense that when Abby Wambach comes in the game, they are definitely more direct. They don't combine nearly as much. They want to try and find Abby's back to goal, look for Sidney LaRue to run off of her a little bit. You can still combine with Abby Wambach. They don't need to force everything quite yet, and that's so far they haven't really developed the speed of play that they had been doing so well in the first half. Kalupni, she has the go-ahead goal, pushing it back. Sauerbrunn. Rampone. Holiday. Holding. Sending it wide or trying to. Partially blocked. Rapino did some juggling, brought it down. Slow down, but keeps possession. Holiday moving it forward. Kolopny for Lloyd. Swept out. Cleared out of play by Murillo. USA throw in. 
I love that one-touch ball, though, from Kolopny. If Lloyd had been ready for that, that would have been easily in the box. Kolopny, that cross, one-header. But that's wide of goal, wide of Santiago. Goal kick here. Yeah, Kolopny's look sharp. She's come in, she scored a goal on her first touch. That was a good little one-touch pass. Just the serve she just put into LaRue was a good service away from the goalkeeper. She's looked very sharp. She has, but the question has never been her attacking when it comes to her being a left back. It's her defending. And the, against the Republic of Ireland, she got turned once. And there weren't many times that the Republic of Ireland had chances to turn, but she should have gotten a yellow card on that turn because she came in late. So it's going to be see how she does now defensively. Played up and wide of Santiago. A chance from Holiday. Well, next month, the FIFA Women's World Cup begins as the U.S. Women's National Team takes on the best teams in the world in search of their third World Cup title. And the only place you can see the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup is on Fox, Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2, beginning on June the 6th. And this is going to be a great World Cup. I mean, you, you can see how much better Mexico is. They're not going to win this game, but you can see that they're, they can compete and they've got players that can make big plays. USA among the favorites to win it. You hear Germany's name mentioned. You hear France's name mentioned and Japan's name mentioned. You want to widen the pool. You can add a, a few more teams to it. And Kat, just to go back when we were talking about Kolopny, this is, I think, one of the biggest challenges for Jill Ellis because some of her players can look great against a certain level team, but against the Germanys, the Frances, Krieger will try to make a play here on this right side and then loses it. I had to finish my thought. Against those top teams, they're not the same player. No, and that was, that was obvious in February when Kolopny played against France. She really struggled with the speed from the French wingers. And so it's going to be interesting if a Krieger or Klingenberg goes down and, and Kolopny has to step in, or if she does start a game defensively, and her speed, how does she react to teams like France, like you're saying? Well, she's going to have to get help. Either somebody comes out of the center of midfield or the flank midfielder, the, the winger on that side, comes back and helps him. So she's never 1v1. For more on that, let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, Jill Ellis has talked to us about Lori Kolopny. You know, she has that experience. She had 100 caps last Sunday against Ireland. She told us she felt like she needed a natural left footer back there. She this play in the box. We'll get back to you in a sec, Jen, as Rapino shoots wide. There you go, Jen. And more on that, she really just said the one thing she still needs to see from Lori is she knows she needs to continue to adjust to the speed of the game, but she wants to get her those reps before the World Cup. Jalela said yesterday she feels confident that all 23 players on her roster could start in a game, and we expect to see a majority of those players play in the World Cup when you figure that to get to the World Cup final it's seven games on turf. Jill on the side leads it by a two to one score. Santiago will put it back into play. Mexico could use some possession here. You can't afford to be defending the rest of the game. Going in toward the box. One header out. Could have been a dangerous play, but the U.S. will pick it up. Intended for Rapino. Bless. Over that right side. Blasted away. Down the sideline. The speed of LaRue catching up to it. Wambach made a run and holds up. Second run is coming. Bryant with Holiday 2. Bryant shot. Deflected. An opportunity for the U.S. We'll turn it into a corner. Really good play by LaRue here. Kolopny was just playing it up the flank. LaRue outdueled her defender, picked up the ball. Good choice with it to find Brian across. Brian takes it inside, takes a shot, earns a corner kick. Off this USA corner from Rapino, driven across. It's deflected. Was that handled? Penalty. 
And the U.S. will have a chance to extend their lead. Off Ariana Romero. This is just unlucky for Romero. She's going to clear it, and it comes back. Hits her in the hand, a definite penalty kick call. I, I agree with you. It's a penalty kick. It's just not called a penalty kick all over the, all over the world. Some would call that a penalty, and some won't call it a penalty. Something that FIFA needs to clean up. So they're playing with one set of rules for the referees. Wambach is ready. Scored more goals against Mexico with 22 than against any other club in the world. Wambach steps up, looks and shoots, and scores. 3-1 U.S. Her third goal in the last couple of games, career number 181. And it's so funny to me, Abby Wambach is a key penalty kick taker for the United States, yet every time I see her, she starts with a new stance, and this time she decides to take it with her left foot and just blasts it past Santiago. No chance for Santiago to save that, that penalty kick. No, that was confident in the corner, high in the corner. So the U.S. now has a 3-1 lead. Finishing chances here in the second half. Not so well in the first. It's going to go out of play. Well, the question for Mexico has always been, can they compete for 90 minutes against the United States? Look at that step. Abby Wambach just loves to play Mexico with over two times as many goals against Mexico as any other team. But Mexico struggles for 90 minutes against playing against teams like the United States for 90 minutes. They've been working on fitness. Bianca Sierra talked about how they've been running up mountains. They've been waking up at 6 in the morning and just pure fitness on the beach, working in the weight room. And still, the United States, in the first 15 minutes, has already scored two goals. It's tough. Looking for more. LaRue is calling for it. Tackled away. She recovers. LaRue looks, shoots. It's deflected. Out for another corner for the United States. Well, you're seeing the U.S. counterattack now, which is a great quality to have. Here comes the ball. Brian runs onto it. She's had a strong game. Doesn't quite get it to LaRue. Rapino's asking for it. Corner kick. 60th minute. U.S. with a 3-1 to one lead over Mexico. Santiago got a fist on that. Brought down. Lumpy was after it. Now it's loose. Juggled. Sauron couldn't get it on target. Ocampo will clear for Mexico. Throw in for the United States. Kat, I just want to go back to your point where, you know, Mexico's struggled to, to keep a consistent effort for 90 minutes. I will concede this to Mexico. This is USA's best effort, in my opinion, this year. They have played at an intensity level that's higher than they played anywhere else uh, in Europe during the Outdoor Cup or here at home. And Mexico has done fairly well keeping themselves in the game. The penalty kick was difficult. Giving up a goal in 32 seconds was not good. But they're better than they've been in the past. Upfield. Corral looking to the right side. Romero. And that's going to be tackled out of play for a throw in from Mexico. Robles will take it. Tobin Heath is up by the fourth official. Into the box it comes. Cleared towards Morgan Bryan. Wambach, 20 in blue for the United States. World's all-time leading goal scorer will push it to the right. She just continues to add to her goal scoring. Up for LaRue again on side. Keepers out. Net is empty. LaRue with her second goal. The U.S. has a 4-1 lead. If I had to make a starting two forward tomorrow for the United States for the World Cup, I would put Sydney LaRue up there. She has been the difference today. She's been on the line. She stays on side. She's patient with her run. One simple touch around Santiago, and with authority, she places it in the back of the
the net. She's always ready to go. I coached her in the under-20 World Cup in 2008 with Alex Morgan. They were an unbelievable dynamic duo. Sydney LaRue won golden ball and golden boot, but she didn't start the first game. She went in at halftime in the first game, played the rest of the time. She just wants to score goals. She will sacrifice anything to get the ball in the back of the net. I, I agree with you, Kat. Right now, she's making a statement for Canada. Tobin Heath has checked into the game for Lauren Holiday, and for Tobin Heath, had a hamstring issue last week. Not available, really, for selection, but deemed ready to go for today. She'll get some minutes now. And you're going to see Morgan Bryant come into the center. Tobin Heath will play on the left, where Pino went over to the right. And all of a sudden, the 1-1 game has turned into a 4-1 USA lead, and now they're not letting up. Brian getting it forward, looking for Heath's first touch. Kolopny going forward, setting it over the top. Thought she had Wambach there. Nodded down by Sierra towards Ocampo. Never got there. Lupino. Head up, looks to cross. Drives it across, cleared away by Murillo. It was a pretty good service by Rapino. Not a lot of great movement in the penalty area there. Nobody with a near post run. Kalupne just tucked that one nicely for Tobin Heath. Looks the cross cleared by Mexico. Foul there on Lloyd. A big night for Sydney LaRue, a breakout game for her in 2015. Mexico's getting ready to make a change. Jennifer Ruiz is going to be coming in, replacing Cristina Murillo. So a little bit more experience. Ruiz had a seven and a half year hiatus from the game. He's just got back fairly recently to playing within the last few years. This is a key moment for Mexico. The game is out of reach. They're not going to win this game. Do they stick with the game plan that Leo Cuellar put out for them at the beginning of this match? They need to look now at for Colombia. This is not a game that they're they're going to win. How are they going to perform in these next 27 minutes? And that's what they need to get out of it now instead of trying to win the game. Well, you're right. They need to play for goal difference because that may be a factor in the World Cup. They can't get hammered by France or England. They got to get the three points against Colombia. Cleared off by Mexico. On the chase, Sauerbrunn will knock it towards Kolopny. To the feet of the captain, Christy Rampone, who's headed for her fifth World Cup. Only person left from that 1999 squad on the field. And so far she looks comfortable. She hasn't been extremely tested, but when the ball has come her way, she hasn't looked afraid at all. Here's LaRue, and she almost got through. She's Ruiz there. She's always ready. Sydney's always ready to get in behind. And I agree with you. Christy Rampone is, is look comfortable. Like, she hasn't. She looks like she's played in 2000, 2015, but she, this is the first game that she's got in. I guess that's being a veteran. Thrown here for the United States. Now with a comfortable 4-1 to one lead. It wasn't that comfortable at halftime. It was 1-1. One, one, even though the U.S. had so many chances. And Pone's in some pretty good company. Homari Sawa has already been picked by Japan. She'll be playing in her sixth World Cup Sawa and others like Formiga could join her. We'll see. But that's pretty impressive, Tony. You have to be good for so many years to have that many. You have and, to be relevant that long. And Sawa and Formiga have been, and so has Christy Rampone. I mean, she's she's amazing. I brought her in in 1997. Saw her in a Mammoth College Central Connecticut State University game, and she impressed me with her athleticism as a forward. And immediately I converted her to a defender, of course. But she was on a basketball scholarship at Mammoth College, so I knew she understood defense. And what she's done with her career has been 
fantastic. What's the thing you think about the most, Kat, as a former teammate of hers? Her versatility and her leadership, really. I mean, she when I first started playing with her, she was an outside back, and now she's one of the best center backs that I've ever played. And, uh, she, you know, she's a leader. She's kind of the mom, you know, in so many ways to this team. But, uh, you know, she's a great she's a great person. One mark. And a little strike goes over the bar and over Santiago. Now, the first camp that Christy Rampone came in, she didn't say a word for the whole week. But she showed some things. And, of course, once she came in again and she got comfortable with, with her teammates and had to give up her basketball scholarship, look what she's done with her career, and it's fantastic. And as you said earlier, she feels great. And she even says, the doctor says, my, I've got a 25-year-old you know, body. I don't have a 40-year-old body. Well, she still doesn't say much. I just had the fortunate uh, locker placement because I was number four. <laughs> Keith, that's blocked. Rolling out. Should be a throw-in from the near sideline. When you're number four and she's number three, we would do a lot of talking back and forth, and uh, it was always fun to be next to her because you do get a lot of words of wisdom. If you, if you stand right next to her, you're going to learn a lot. Klopny's ready for this throw-in. Her goal made it a two-to-one game right at the start of this half, right off the kickoff. Long back added a penalty kick. Maru added her second goal. Heath in line. Now it's picked off and cleared. It'll bounce back towards Rampone in the circle. Moving it ahead. Almost had Rampone. Mexico will collect. I like that little overlap by Heath and Kolopny. Mexico's getting ready to make another change with Monica Alvarado up by the fourth official. And we're going to see it now. Well, they've got Cuellar's number up, and she's subbed in. It doesn't appear to be injured, so that's an interesting change. She may be surprised as well. So Monica Alvarado was born in Santa Monica, California. Coming into the game. It was at TCU. Here's Mexico just inside the USA box. Corral losing there. It took too long. She didn't have much support with her. A creeper pass to Rapino in the middle. Big switch there. The US getting ready to make two more changes. Heath after it. Knocked out of play by Robles. Will we see the changes now? We will. Kelly O'Hara and Whitney Engen are going to be coming in. Engen coming for Sour Run and O'Hara for Krieger. I think these are the first minutes that Sour Run hasn't played. First minute she's been taken out of the game in 2015. Yep. So Engen and O'Hara have checked in. Play continues as that ball is knocked out of play. So we really have a new back four for the United States. So it's a good opportunity for Jill Ellis to give some players some minutes. We haven't seen Whitney Engen in a while. She's dealt with some injuries as well. And I'm glad Kelly O'Hara got in because I didn't think she had a great game against the Republic of Ireland. She's a better player than that. And so seeing what she can do in this last few minutes here. They've announced a sellout here, which is 27,000 at the Stub Hub Center. Maru's header goes out of play. So, guys, how do you want to see the U.S. finish this off? Right now, it's a convincing lead, I would say, at 4-1. to one. But what do you look for now in the final 20 minutes or so? Well, they need to keep the speed of play up. They've done so well so far, but when you're up 4-1, to one, you tend to get a bit sloppy and lackadaisical. They need to keep... Stay with the game plan and finish what they started from zero to 90 and don't get complacent. Coach? Yeah, I mean, I, to me, it's very important for Jill Ellis to understand the difference of her team in this match. This team had a different focus defensively. They put players under pressure immediately. 
and it turned into creating chances. And to me, that's what they need to do through the whole 90 minutes. They have to play with that same defensive inten intensity because in the history of our USA women, that's been one of their cornerstones. It's made the game quicker than the opponent could play, and I think we've seen that here with Mexico, and it's created some easier opportunities. LaRouche slides this one for Heath. Edge of the box for Tobin Heath. Nice cut there at the end line. Plays it to the back post. Headed goal by Wambach. 5-1 USA. Wambach has two. How about that move by <laughs> Tobin Heath? I fell over, and I'm up here in the TV booth. That's what Tobin Heath brings for you. I actually watched her in the warm-up, and she did a sick move like that, and they all just walked off the field because they were such in awe of what she can bring. And it's an excellent flick and play from Sydney LaRue and Abby Wambach. And here's Tobin Heath. She just sets up her defender and just a quick move and perfectly placed by Abby Wambach. She finishes that every single time. Ronaldinho. That was the Ronaldinho move. But the, not only the great move, look at the cross. Santiago gets stranded a bit, and now it's back post. And if it's back post for Abby Wambach, it's going to end up in the back of the net. 182nd goal now for Wambach, who has 24 against Mexico. Down this right sideline, Romero played it across, headed away by Rampone. Rapino back to help out. The calmness of Rampone in the box, and now Rapino clears. And that's the concern right there with Kolopny, getting beat by that player. She's such a good soccer player, but she's got to get help defensively. Well, all of a sudden, guys, we're talking about the forwards not scoring. That's two straight two-goal games for Abby Wambach, and LaRue has two goals, so maybe now some of that pressure is off. Maybe. Well, Megan Rapino now needs to get a goal. She's had a lot of opportunities today. And she's been a bit rusty with her injuries, and, and maybe now she needs to get a, a goal in, in this kind of, you know, time where it seems like the United States is getting a lot of good looks. Corral moving it, shooting it. It's an easy one for Hope Solo. Well, I like what you always said to Jenny at halftime. If you keep getting, if we keep getting chances, balls will go in the back of the net, and that's what happened. And let me tell you something about scoring. It's contagious. So one player starts, and it could be Abby Wambach's two goals last weekend, and all of a sudden, goals start coming in. And I agree with rapino has got to start putting away her chances. On this right sideline, chase to the ball of the route for Wambach. And that's blocked as she went down in a heap. Turned away by Mexico, but not for long. Another kick out of towards the center circle for Corral. And that's picked off by Engen, but fouled. The foul was called on Whitney Engen. And you can see LaRue digging that out of the corner. I didn't know if Abby Wambach was trying to dummy that through or... Oh, nice move there by Robles. Brian there to help out. And overshot Kolopny. Tough ball. Throw in for Mexico. Very good day for Morgan Bryan. Initially played out wide in the first half. Wambach. And the U.S. will collect it. One more game to go at Red Bull Arena against South Korea. And I wonder who the two starting forwards might be. Could be the two that are in there right now. The and Wambach. We'll see. You mentioned Morgan Bryan. I spoke to her. NWSL coach Randy Waldrum and he said he is amazed at how she sees the game for such a young player he says she sees things two passes ahead and he's just so impressed with her and you can see how lethal she can be when she's in more of an attacking role she's been fine here in this offensive role she's done what she needs to do but she's so lethal when she's up there and she causes so much trouble and and that's where I would like to see her more so she can get into the attack because of how smart she is with her final pass confident too she's the youngest player on the team at 22 you wouldn't know it by the way she plays coming closer toward goal but Mexico will deny that up for run hell but the foul was given the play's going to be stopped Rapino. 
Is there an injury or just a shoe problem? I think she got stepped on a little bit, but she'll be fine. Shaking it off. Just making Rapino. That was a step for sure. That hurt. Alvarado. Rapino in the U.S. with a 5 1 lead. It was 1 1 at halftime. The goal by Kolopny in that first minute. After about a half a minute had gone by, gave the USA the jolt probably that they needed. Then Wambach added one on a penalty kick. Leroux got her second a few minutes later. And then Abby Wambach again. Mexico back on the ball. Robles. Trying to go long for Romero. Kalopney has it. Back to Hope Solo. Shutout streak ended at some 536 minutes. And she conceded that goal to Calderon, who left with an injury. Engen for the U.S. 78th minute. U.S. up 5-1. Kalopney. USA in their second to last friendly before it counts against Australia at the World Cup. It's their first game. LaRue for Kolopny bringing it down. Thought about the shot for the moment on the right foot. Now waits for some help. Carly Lloyd. LaRue back for Brian. And wide on that right sideline. Played in front and Santiago cut it off before Rapino could get to it. Santiago will put it back into play. A couple of goals today for Sidney LaRue and a couple for Abby Wambach. Big stories there. Wambach second straight, two-goal game and for LaRue. Hadn't scored in her last 13 games. Granted, some of those were as a sub in limited minutes, but she has looked very sharp today. Now you can see the change in the USA defense. They've kind of dropped their restraining line a little bit deeper which makes sense at this point in the game but sometimes that's how they start games and, and I don't like that defense Mexico on the ball Romero a tug there from Heath Kolopny and the ball goes out of play right in front of the Mexico bench I agree with you I don't like that defense you see how dangerous the United States can be when they press the back four of any team but Mexico struggled with it from the very beginning of the game and that's why the United States has five goals and you know as a center back that you would much rather have time and a little bit of space and knock the ball around than have a Sidney LaRue or a press or anybody running at you and forcing you to play quickly. Perez launches that free kick, cleared away by the U.S. Settled again. Over to Perez, who's had a bit of a quiet night. Veronica Perez sending it into the box. One clearance, squat down. Corral got it forward, that's cleared away. Perez back on it. Chased by Wambach. Intended for Ron Held. Nodded forward, nobody in the green and white making that run. And O'Hara picks it up. Towards Wambach. LaRue took a hit. Stays up on her feet, but it's going to be gathered in by Garcia Mendez, who plays it back to Santiago. Who knows what the score would be if Santiago didn't have the kind of game she's had tonight. I was just thinking that it's, it's sad that the score line is five goals against her because of how well she played, especially in the first half. She saved Mexico so many times. But Mexico, they have to be encouraged by that. You need that strong goalkeeper in a World Cup to advance. I'm, I'm hopeful for Mexico. I think they're going to make a good run to get into the second round, to, to get a, their first victory ever in the World Cup. And that is their goal. They know they're not going to win the World Cup. They want to get out of the group stage. Ruiz back to Santiago Wambach with some higher pressure Kolopny in the air Heath lost that in the battle with Ron Hell Jennifer Ruiz is on it well and speaking with Monica Campo 
for Mexico. I asked her about how playing in the NWSL helps this Mexican team because a lot of players now are on different NWSL teams. And she's like, the speed of play and the strength has really taught her playing against the American players all the time. And, and you're seeing that Mexico is dealing with it a lot better in this game. Perez blocked. Rapino, great job coming back. And now Lloyd takes off for the United States with a 5-1 lead. Two players on two goal games. Saying over be trying to feed LaRue and Wambach. Tobin Heath against Robles. She tried to do another fancy move around Alvarado. This time Mexico didn't bite. But I like the mobility that you saw Abby Wambach overlap, drag a defender away from her. That's good play. And you know, earlier in the year, we didn't see that type of mobility by the forwards. It's a Tobin Heath throw in. Knocked back. LaRue, edge of the box. Kalupni loads up the left foot. Try to play that inside. It's cleared away. Towards Corral. Chased by Engen. Perez moving it. And now Mexico will lose it here in the 83rd minute. USA with a 5-1 lead. Wambach. Rapino. And then just lost it there in the end. Perez cuts it back. And then Perez got clipped. No foul call there either. Let's go back on the ball with Rangel. Perez is back up beside her. Corral. Left there for Robles. He's played her entire pro career in Spain. Corral. From distance back to Robles. Romero, Corral, getting inside the box, Corral looking, in line, tackled out, waiting for the signal if it's a corner or a goal kick, and it's going to be a corner, and now the assistant referee says goal kick, so let's see, it's going to be a goal kick, the referee has concurred with her assistant referee. Goal kick. kick, no? Uh, it looks like a goal kick. Right sideline for O'Hara and USA. Up 5 1, Rapino. Out for a Mexico throw in. Mexico has a couple of games left. They'll take on Costa Rica in their final two friendlies before it counts for them in their first game against Colombia. in the circle. Yeah, she dealt with that well because uh, she was closed pretty hard. Rapino. Closer. That shot deflected. And it falls right in the arms of Santiago with Lombach making that run after a rebound. Next month, the FIFA Women's World Cup begins as the U.S. Women's National Team takes on the best teams in the world in search of their third World Cup title, first since 1999. The only place you can see the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup is on Fox, Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2. It all starts June the 6th. Hope Solo's clearance over the halfway line. Headed back the other way. O'Hara. To solo. 86th minute here, 5 1 USA. We've talked a lot about how this has been the best performance for the United States this year. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they've just mixed up possession and direct. They've done well with the flank pit. They've been creative. They've pressed. They've just done everything extremely well. They just haven't made any major mistakes except on the goal. It's a good sign for the United States. Yeah, I agree, Kat. I think their intensity level and their willingness to close uh, was a key for them today. And they created a lot of good goal scoring opportunities. Santiago saved the bunch. Perez with a low shot. Right at Hope Solo. Joe Ellis said yesterday, 
I my goal is to get us to peak in Canada and this performance shows me that they're getting closer to that peak when they get into Canada and obviously improve while you're there. Tony, would you have said that in the first half? No. Okay. Oh, the first half. I thought you were going to say last week. No, no, no. Uh, no, this first, first half, half because they yes. only they only had the one goal. They created a lot. Yes, because I agreed with her. If you keep creating those type of chances, you're going to score goals. And the first half, I thought, was a strong court, the first half that they can build on. And yes, they need to finish their chances better. But if you create those type of chances, you will score goals. Wombox flick towards LaRue. And that's going to be cleared away. LaRue has been a handful tonight for that Mexican defense. Well, if the United States improves as much as they have from the Republic of Ireland to Mexico and then to the next game, they're going to be a very scary team and a very tough team to beat with this. I mean, it is a vast improvement from just last week. And if they are on their way to peaking, it's scary to think what that could be. Their potential is enormous. One more game against another World Cup team, South Korea. And then they'll take on Australia for real in Canada as the World Cup begins for them. They still have some things to sort out in the midfield. You know, they don't play with a traditional number six. Who's looking for a hat trick? And why not? Yeah, not a bad effort. Nice layoff by Abby Wambach. Those two seem to have a little bit of a, a, re, a relationship. Here's the service. Abby lays it off with her chest. Sid takes a good half chance there, almost puts it in the upper corner. Besides LaRue's two goals and her good runs, I think this is a bigger statement that she's going to get to play 90 minutes today because injuries have slowed her down. She has not looked like the Sydney LaRue we've seen before. This looks like the Sydney LaRue that we know. And she looks fit. She hasn't stopped the whole game. And she's made some long runs. They're exhausting. And she's still going. Look, she's looking to get in behind. Yeah. Rapino sees her. She was looking for it off Rapino. The shot. There's her goal. There's the one. And Kat, that was her toughest chance in the last, like, five games. <laughs> You're exactly right. What a finish from Megan Rapino. That should give her some confidence going forward. Looks like an offside. I, it looked offside to me. Too, oh, they uh, called it. But the flag never went up. Let's well, take a look. I thought it she looks made like it. the pass to LaRue was an offside. I pass. thought she handled it. I think that's why they called it. No? Oh, could be. So that's the luck she's having. She's had a great Lots opportunity. Hand. Yeah, handball. handball, okay. That's what I thought originally calling it, but I thought they let it go. So, you guys can go back to that other statement. She still needs to score, but what a goal that was. That's still a confidence blow. Yeah, yeah. That is Regardless a yeah. of the handball, that's still yeah. a confidence blow. That's, that's an excellent that was, goal. That's the best goal of the night, right? But it doesn't count. <laughs> and she's capable of scoring some pretty amazing yeah. goals. Rapinos pass ahead, that's blocked. As this game nears its conclusion, guys, let's get some final thoughts. Kat, we start with you. Well, Cindy LaRue, in my opinion, should be starting in the World Cup based on tonight. She proves to be a different player than the U.S. has, has had in the lead-up games. She just wanted it more, and she wants it more right now. And I would start her if I were Jill Ellis. Yeah, she made a statement today. This is her first chance to start, and she was relentless for 90 minutes. And you got Wambach, who scored a brace in two straight games. Now you got LaRue scoring goals. The USA is starting to round into shape. A couple of minutes put on the board here. USA's best performance. We're all in agreement here in 2015. Now they just need to work on marking in the box. That was the one blemish for today was marking in the box and Pope's decision to come out on that ball. And besides that, it was, it was an excellent game for the United States. Rangel holds number seven for Mexico, right sideline, Robles. Runs in with a double team and then runs out of space. Lost it, USA throw in. Well, let me just go on the record of saying, I think the USA is the team to beat this year. I can't imagine Abby Wambach in her career, Hope Solo, Carly Lloyd, Christy Rampone. Okay, Christy won in 1999, but going through the career and not winning a World Cup. I just can't imagine that happening. Shannon Box, the whole group of them. She's gonna be around for a while. Ball played forward, Wambach. 
Coming all the way back. Corral. Taken by Klubnik. Intercepted there, but then lost by Mexico. I never won a World Cup, Tony. What does that say? <laughs> Just kidding. You, you were cheated. <laughs> you deserve to win one. Remember, it's been 16 years since the last time U.S. won a World Cup. It's time. Alvaro was going to pick it up, but there was a foul. The play has been stopped. Wambach gets a warning. Held up now by Mexico. Garcia Mendez going forward. Mexico back on the ball with Sierra. That is going to do it. Convincing win today for the United States. Sydney LaRue, a terrific game. Looks like she could still be playing. Her and Wabach each with a couple of goals on this night as the USA defeats Mexico by a 5-1 to one score with one game still to play before the World Cup begins for Team USA. Stick around. Rob in our studio will take over after the break. Big day for Wambach, big day for LaRue, and a big day for the United States. A 5-1 win over Mexico.